Loading the film on the clips is very simple. Place the roll on the supply spindle and thread the film through the rollers to capture the bail arm on both sides. Put the end of the film into the take-up reel and spool it so it's secure. Then the controls and the program can be used to advance the film. Within the Nexstar scanning application, there are some basic parameters that need to be input for scanning. The DPI, uh, we scan at 200 DPI in this case. The reduction ratio, which we'll set at 24x. Um, the film type, 16 millimeter or 35 millimeter. Uh, you can actually input whatever size you want if you want to increase or decrease that as well. The polarity of the film and the supply reel side that the film is coming from, in this case we're coming from the right side of the reel. The take up side we do one way so there's no option for that. The naming part of the scan setup has the production parameters for a job ID, a batch ID which can be something relevant to the job you're doing. In this case I'll, I'll call this simplex. And then a roll name, this should identify each individual roll within the collection that's being scanned. I would load the film at this point and then advance it to close to my first image so that I can take advantage of the automatic exposure in the software. There's a lot of lead on this roll, so when I advance do we get close to the first image and then click start. The scanning would begin at a slower rate at first while the lamp is being adjusted. Once the optimum lighting is found, the scanner will either rewind or continue at full speed. And this entire roll will be scanned without any additional intervention from the operator. Since the scanning could be unattended, when the scanner detects the specified amount of blank film, it would pause the scanning and present a prompt that asks if it's the end of the roll. If it is the end of the roll, as is the case now, you would simply click yes, and this would end that particular roll. Um, the rewind is very fast as well. We can do a high speed rewind to get the roll off. Once the scanning is complete, the second and important stage of auditing can then take place. We launch the auditor application and use the open dialog to select the role that we want to work on. I will open the simplex role that we just scanned. And you can see the images as they have been detected. There is a blackout feature within the auditor to view images that have not been detected. So I'll enable the blackout feature so we can make a quick check to see if there's any uh, entire images that were missed. Okay, in this case we captured all the images. To demonstrate the feature, I will delete one of the smaller frames in case this image was missed during the detection when the blackout runs. That image would stand out very clearly here as a missed image. The operator would have the choice of drawing a box around this to include that image. And notice the image count updates automatically when a frame is added or deleted. The blackout feature is one of the assurance steps 
that NextScan uses to guarantee that everything on the film that needs to be captured is actually captured. So we do scan the roll from beginning to end, capturing every thing that's on the roll, blip, numbers, scratches, everything from beginning to end, and then the detection runs to determine where the images actually are, but the operator performing the audit has the ability to verify that that detection is correct and make any changes necessary to ensure that everything that needs to be output actually gets output. Once the detection is verified, the next stage is to prepare the images for output. Uh, it's a good idea to select a sample image um, to use to set up the parameters for output. You can view the image in a preview window and then adjust any settings that would be required to get the desired output. In this case, we'll try to sharpen this image up just a little bit. If the image needs to be rotated, we have the options to rotate or mirror anything that needs to be done to get the current orientation is available here. Once the correct settings are set, the settings could be applied to all the images so that this portion does not have to be done repetitively. This would apply to every image on the roll. If there are images that need specific attention, those particular images can also be adjusted and the changes that are made can be applied to those images only. Um, in this case, I can increase the level of sharpening on this image and simply click OK. Only this image will be affected by this change. So we have global settings that can be applied, individual settings that can be applied, and we also have the ability to apply settings to a particular group of images. We'll scan a duplex roll. The duplex rolls have two images per frame. Um, so I'll go ahead and load that film again just like I did. And there's no difference to scanning the duplex versus the simplex. The only thing we'll specify differently in this case is the reduction ratio since the duplex is typically filmed at higher reduction ratios and we'll change the name to duplex. And again, I'll just go ahead and click start and let the automatic adaptive exposure do its job of determining the appropriate light settings for me. So notice that first we start scanning a little bit slower once the lamp is adjusted appropriately, again, we'll rewind and then carry on at full speed. If the lamp settings is already close to where it needs to be, the scanner will just ramp up and scan at full speed after it determines that the lamp settings are okay. And at that point, the scanning can continue unattended. Um, we just scanned a duplex roll. So I'll show you what that looks like in the auditor. Again, we go to the open dialog and we select the duplex row. That opens up. At the bottom, you would notice there is a frame count and an image count. The image count is twice times the frame count because every frame actually contains two images in this case. The numbering that's displayed is for the frames. If you want to verify the images are part of a frame, you can hover over the images and check that this is image number one from frame number one and image number two from frame number two. The ordering of which image comes first, whether it's top or bottom, can also be adjusted depending on if the documents were front and back and filmed out of order. If the documents had multi-level blips, in this case, we have a single level page, but if there were document blips or folder level blips, when we set up the naming, we have the option of using those blip markers, the blip document number or the blip folder number, to organize these documents into multi-page files or to be output into separate folders. And everything that goes for setting up the image parameters for output in simplex 
goes the same way for duplex. The only additional thing you would need to worry about is setting up the naming appropriately in the case of multi-level blips, if the duplex film contain multi-level blips.